Welcome back to another episode of Navigating Adulthood and IDD. I'm very excited to have again on the podcast my friend and colleague, Christine Devereaux of Spectrum Yoga. Yay! Welcome back, Christine! Thank you. Thanks for having me back. I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. I feel like I need a sound effects board. Oh yeah, you do. Be like, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) Maybe one day soon, right? To spice up the podcast. But yeah, you're my first repeat guest on the podcast. feel very special. Love it. So do you mind giving listeners a short introduction um, and maybe how things have been since the last time you were on? Sure. So I own Spectrum Yoga, which is a therapeutic yoga service for youth through adult who have, particularly who have autism, sensory processing challenges, ADHD, and anxiety, but really all youth. And then I also have like e-products and other services to support kids, yoga teachers, professionals, and parents in the in this space as well in this community. And so yeah, I adapt yoga basically to make it fun and purposeful so that it's accessible to kids who may not have, and adults who may not have access to community yoga classes essentially. And there's much more to it and you know I could go on and on. But since I've been on last, a lot has changed actually. I can't even That's really true. remember what we talked about. I remember our community coffee time was like all about yoga. But since we've talked last, I've moved out of state, moved out of Colorado. I'm in Tennessee now. And I've had to put services on hold uh, as far like COVID really hit hard for in-person, both group classes and private sessions. And it just kind of tanked that aspect of my business, just to be honest. And I was keeping up for a while through like affiliate links and other online things. And then just as it progressed, it became harder and harder for, you know, people weren't really buying things and, you know, wanting to save, which yeah, I get that for sure. So anyway, so I really did put a pause on and then I got pregnant, which I'm like, I'm about to actually have a little baby in like three days. (laughs) So that also put a pause on services and other things. And then I've just been trying to pick up this book because, you know, we started this two years ago about, I can't really remember. And then we had to take that break off because I wanted to, I took another training on mudras and then also with the pregnancy, I was super sick and I really couldn't work. So we did have like a time off, but now it is done. And now it is going to be released on Sunday. So that's really like all the major changes I feel like since we talked last. And I hope I got them all because I really don't remember what we talked about. (laughs) My mom brain is terrible. Pregnancy brain. Right. All good. I think we focused a lot on like even recreation therapy. Oh, yes. You had done that study. I can't, like like you said, I can't remember. (laughs) can't remember either because it feels like so long ago it does so we probably touched on some yoga stuff but i think we really dove into that study as far as i can remember yes yeah that sounds right yep yeah and even just reflecting on this time is kind of wild because i don't think either of us would have thought like the pandemic would be going on you'd you know you'd be out of state like there's so many changes that have happened i got married Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm still dealing with all of the <laughs> the wedding stuff even a year later. Yeah. Uh because of the pandemic. So it's it's just interesting mm-hmm. how how it's still affecting so much. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And then so you're here today, because one, we've always talked about how we need to get you back on. So success. We did it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then two, like you were alluding to and talking about, we created an ebook together, which yeah, we started. I don't, yeah, I don't even remember the start date. I know we've been working together <laughs> for a long time. And even in early conversations, I would talk about like holding a ukulele cord and you were like, that's just like a mudra. And I feel like I was like, what's a mudra? <laughs> <laughs> and it, and that, that's what started this whole thing, this whole process. So our ebook is called Music and Mudras, and we're going to dive into that a little bit today and let listeners know more about it, more about mudras. But yeah, would you mind telling us a little bit more about the ebook that we made? 
Yeah. So it, it dives in a lot to what mudras are and, and yoga as well, since you can't really implement mudras without some kind of an understanding of the history and the intention or purpose or outcome or whatever you want to say that mudras elicit. And so we really did make this an introductory guide for that reason and for a lot of other reasons. But really, we wanted this to be a great place to start for and an easy place to start for anybody who wants to teach music and mudras, either separately or together, although we merged the two. And then getting our students to learn about and participate in mudras too. So of course, in our ebook, we talk about the history and then we talk about how mudras impact every aspect of yoga. So a lot of people think yoga is just what you see as far as like asana and poses, but there's eight limbs of yoga and people could check out the community coffee time because I go way more into depth as to what yoga actually is in that. But we talk a little bit more about the five elements and yoga. And so if people think that's like woo-woo craziness, it makes sense, I think, in the book of how they do that. And I want to create a little, a few more activities too, but we'll talk about that as far as that. And then we go into goal-based interventions. And then again, this is an introductory guide. So mudras do way more than we've mentioned in this book, but they do things therapeutically right off the bat. And we talk about kind of eight goal-based areas and go into depth as far as the combination with music as well. And I feel like I should mention what mudras are in case people don't know. They're gestures of the face, body, and of hands. And so for this ebook, we just talk about hand mudras or hasta mudras. And the gesture part you can think about like thumbs up is a gesture. We communicate through our hands a lot non-verbally and mudras also do that as well. And we kind of talk about that in the ebook as well. And then finally with the ebook, I think the last part of it is activities that are ready to go and implement either at home or in your sessions, in your group classes, and not only just ready to go, but there's also tips in there with how to make up your own activities for your specific clients and students in order to make them even more purposeful and playful for them. And we also have the e-card kind of bonus deck that supports visuals, sequencing, and other adaptive supports. And then of course, <laughs> the soundtrack, I keep forgetting how much is involved in this ebook. The soundtrack has 18 songs, stories, instrumentals that go along with the activities, or you can use them to create your own activities as well. So there's, I keep calling it more than an ebook ebook because <laughs> it's like an entire system. So yeah, that's, I don't know if you want me to expand anywhere. No, that's good. And I even, you know, thinking about the ebook, how it's gotten here, reminded me this was a course <laughs> once right. upon a time. That's right. Uh, that was our first conception of this is like, oh, let's do a course. And, you know, I think not that the pandemic happened, but was like happening, <laughs> you know, like things, things got really busy for both of us and we had to take that pause and you're going to do more training. And then you were like, what if we just did an ebook? Um, and the most challenging part of that process, I think for both of us was we were like planning on just talking about like a lot of our information. Right. So then we had to try to be really concise in our ebook about like, what is the information we want to share with everybody in the most clear way. And I think you know, that's one thing I'm excited about sharing with everybody is that it's super accessible if you don't know anything about yoga, kind of like, well, I know a little more, mostly because of you, Christine, but but before, you know, as I'm learning more about yoga, I, I was hopefully a good editor where I was like, hey, this doesn't make any sense to me. And, and, and we could kind of do my... that back and forth because you could tell yeah. me about music stuff, like Bonnie, that sentence didn't make any sense. And then be like, oh, I meant receptive music. What am I going on about? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I kind of talked over you. But yeah, oh, that was good. one of my favorite parts was because I don't know what people don't know. Sometimes I don't even know what I don't know. But so to get feedback and being like, you are way, you're talking way above and bring it back down basically <laughs> was really, really helpful. And then learning about music too was awesome. You know, you have an idea of what music therapy is as an intervention, and then you get into it and especially merging it with 
yoga therapy, therapeutic yoga, and the understanding becomes a little deeper. And so to ask questions and to learn, that was kind of my favorite part of making it. And I love that you said it, it is accessible because we're both coming from different lenses, essentially, but we, but it makes it understandable for anybody from any background. It's not overwhelming. We really tried to make it understandable and really where you can just take that information and boom, apply it right away to your own personal practice. You can experience what we're talking about and then to either your child at home or your students and clients that you work with. And I feel like we achieved that. So I hope anybody listening who got the ebook feels the same way. Yeah, I agree. And I think you touched on a good point of like, we really wanted this to be introductory and accessible. So like if you're a music therapist listening and don't know anything about yoga, that's okay. This book is for you. If you're a yoga teacher or yoga therapist and don't know a lot about music or music therapy, that's okay. This book is for you. If you're a parent and don't really know how to apply either, that's okay. Like we, we try to take you through it as, sim- as simply as possible, but still with like a lot of information and we have reference page with research later for anybody who really wants to dig in because yeah I, I touch I feel like maybe music could be it could have been expanded a little more but I really wanted the focus to be on the history of yoga because I think as you said that's so important to understanding that practice and then we dive a little bit into a kind of surface basic introductory on music and research and then what I love is after that we go through like the goals that you can have with our students and clients where like both yoga and music really touches these different domains of like what motor goals have has both music and yoga improved what has this improved and i feel like that really takes both fields together for anybody who's listening yes i love that too it is really kind of a beautiful like blend of the two to support our students in living their lives a little bit more fully through those goal domains in a fun and new way. So I always feel like for me, especially with private clients, I'm always looking for new kind of interventions or at least parts of our session and then for classes too. And when you know your students and clients really well and you know what they're trying to work on in life so that they can have more participation in life and then you can make it fun, I feel like that's the best thing ever. And pretty much that that's like the secondary, but also primary goal of the e- ebook. Right. Because, you know, we want to make it accessible for the reader, but ultimately it's to get this, these practices and these activities and this information to who's ever reading the book into the lives of people they're trying to support so that they can thrive really. Yeah, definitely. And the back half of the ebook, I think, really supports that too, as you were talking about. It's 13 activities. (laughs) 13 (laughs) activities with like the handouts and printouts and ready to go. I feel like we have another like five activities that we detail without a handout that that are like example activities. So 13, like, like print out in your hands, in your students' hands, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 13 activities, ready to go, lots of ideas and like tips on how to come up with even more ideas. And we also have a resource page that gets linked to in the ebook where we're going to post even more activities as time goes on because we, Christine and I, we just, you know, we get so many ideas. We can't stop. (laughs) We can't can't stop. stop. (laughs) We already have three. One will be coming out. Hopefully for Halloween, we have a loving kindness meditation with music coming out in there. And then I want to do a five element one awesome. um, because we talk about the five elements and we do have several actually five elements activities, but I wanted to bring in the five elements, elements that certain mudras support. So we don't talk about like Chinmaya mudra goes with the earth element. So things like that. So there's always more in that additional learning resources page, right. as well as other kind of training and educational videos for people who want to dive deeper into mudras. 
Yeah, and so it's one thing that's part of the ebook is this access to this page. So even the activities don't stop at 13. Right. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Hi, Queenie. <laughs> so I think we've laid out the ebook pretty clearly. You get a 78 page ebook with 13 printable takeaway activities, a 37 e card deck, and 18 MP3s, which are on our SoundCloud. So you get linked to the SoundCloud and then the additional resource page. Did I miss anything? The did you say the e cards? I think so. There's okay. thirty seven. Thirty seven, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. The, yeah, and they have the mudras on them, and then there's also some instruments in the deck too. And uh, we lay out different ways you can use those in the ebook, and I'm sure we'll keep coming up with things in our additional resources with the cards as well. But those are just visuals that you can print out, laminate, bring to a group or an individual. Like super easy. Mm-hmm. And lots of fun ways to implement all of oh, yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it all. Sweet. Okay. So what is your favorite activity in the book? It's kind of a mix. The pirate story is probably my favorite. I was going to say that too. <laughs> yeah. Because when I implemented all the activities with students, that was also their favorites. And, you know, I think... I talk about it actually in one of my YouTube videos, but one of the students, it inspired him to start creative writing as a hobby at home. And he started making up his own stories and bringing them into class and reading them to the class. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So because of that, like one incident, or it's not an incident, it's like an amazing <laughs> thing that occurred that it's my, my favorite for sure. And then my second is, the butterfly song because it's just so peaceful and even the teens like that and even the teen boys like that and because you may think a butterfly song is very girly but everybody really feels very soothed and quite balanced after that and it's a really good kind of way to lead into final rest in yoga classes so Music therapists may want to even use it at the beginning of your session just to have that kind of calmed focus effect to then implement your services. But if it really impacts them, wait to the end and then they'll be all rested and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, those two are my favorite. And the pirate story, going back to that one, to it's really interactive and the students get to participate and make up their own story essentially with the, it's kind of mad libsy. And so seeing their creativity and just the laughter that comes out of that story. Oh my God. It's so fun. But yeah, I had to go back because I had to say that it's really <laughs> so fun. I saved a couple as like sentimental, Aww, yeah, just little, I saved a couple from the, from students when we, when I implemented them in group classes and yeah. They're so funny. That's awesome. Yeah, the pirate story definitely came up in my head as like a top one as well. I think that was probably the longest like process of making one of the activities because there's a lot of like, you wrote the story and then I recorded it, but then we were like, wait, let's rewrite it. So then I'd re-record it and I like I was like, okay, I'm gonna compose some music and um, I felt so bad. And then I would implement it with <laughs> students and it would be like, Oh, this doesn't work. So I'd have to and you've already recorded it. So I'd have to go back to you and be like, Spani, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But we have to change like words and mudras and timing or something, whatever it was. Right. But, but so it worked. It worked. And it is quite amazing, I have to say. Yeah, it was a really fun creative process. And mm -hmm. I've talked with you about this, about how the recording, even still, I was like, maybe I went too fast. But you said when you implement it with students, it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, it's super fun. And <laughs> you also can, if it really is too hard, you can always pause it. Always pause. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we may make another one with longer pauses and add it to the SoundCloud. So that's another cool thing about the ebook is it's super adaptable. And with the additional learning 
resource page. People can ask questions. So if anybody has a request or a question about something, they can let us know and we can likely update anything depending on the request and <laughs> our time and things. But yeah, if it's too hard, just push press pause when needed and then start it again. So that's kind of the cool, another cool aspect. But it is really fun. They like when it speeds up. They they fo their focus is I've never seen such laser focus before. They're like, here it comes. It's gonna go fast. <laughs> and it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. It works out where you can either have it like that fast sequence or you can put always pause. Mm -hmm. Always make it work. Right. Another activity I think I wanna highlight is the Sata Nama activities because that's what I've used most with my students especially before like ukulele students or piano students we would do the different tracks that we have on SoundCloud and for musicians that's one part we haven't talked about the ebook is there's a few scores in the ebook of these um Satanama tracks as well and I don't know how much you want to get into that in this podcast. There, we've made a lot of YouTube videos on Sata and Ama that we can link for sure. And there's more info on that in the ebook as well. But those tracks have been so fun to do with students with like the rock and the country kind of beats when they've enjoyed like keeping up and then it like goes out in the middle because you have to kind of keep the time and like that's all, that's always been fun to do too because they're just like we're are we done and I'm like keep going <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts of it too I yes I forgot I use that almost in every single group class as a beginner as a beginning activity and sometimes I use it as an ending activity with the beginning to like wrap the whole class together and students will request that a lot as well. So Satana Ma is actually an ancient actual mudra practice and it's called Kirtan Kriya. And we go really into depth in the book about that and a lot of research as well as understanding it from the yoga lens as well and how it is so beneficial, therapeutic, and transformative, truly. One of the research results shows, and I think they've repeated it, that it increases the length of the telomeres, so which are the end caps on your DNA. And so it literally changes your DNA, which is incredible. And I think that's why so many, so many of my students request Satanama. They can really feel it. I think as adults, we take a little bit longer to feel the mudra effects where when I work with kids and even like adults with developmental disabilities, I can see immediate kind of calming, balancing that parasympathetic activation really setting in. Now, not all mudras are relaxing and things. We want to use them in a balancing way and for the individual in front of us, but Satanama is one of those that will quite always, like always balance, no matter if you have high or low energy. It's really powerful and it's musical. So it uses chanting or singing and there's also a visualization that goes with it, but I never teach that until students are very familiar with it. And then the hand sequence. So I don't know if you want to like link a couple of your videos down, but I love what you've done too, to make it even more accessible or motivating for students that may not just want to sing it because a lot of my students don't open their mouth at all the whole time. They don't want to sing. So sometimes we'll talk it out, which is just fine, or they just do the hand movements. But with the rock and the country beat, it's so motivating and adds that extra layer of motivation. And I don't, I can talk, there's so much to it, but I do have the one video that goes over exactly what Satanama is and the research too. So I kind of feel like if people want to learn more, they can go to those videos and also buy the ebook because there's some stuff in the ebook that aren't in the videos and vice versa. But right. that really is a, tr a true yoga practice that is extremely therapeutic. And then adding the, the beats that you made for individualized use is really cool. Yeah. And that was something that really evolved with the ebook too. Cause I feel like it was like one of the 
like activities at first and now it's like its own section <laughs> yeah it, <laughs> as I kept going I was like oh my gosh there's more and more and as I started I looking into the research more and more I was like wow there's there's a ton of research which is rare in yoga and yoga therapy especially to do it right for yoga which I talk about in the research YouTube video for the, the satanama but or the Kritan Kriya, but that is one too that students will use outside of our yoga sessions. They'll use it in life. They'll use it at school and do it under their desk with their hands. They'll do it before bed. They'll do it at various appointments that cause them anxiety and stress. They will do it. I had one when I first started teaching, I did Satanama and the parent dropped the kids off, her her kid off and then came back and picked him up. So she didn't necessarily know what we were doing in class. And I didn't say, you know, here's the class plan. And like two or three weeks later, she came in and she's like, what is Satanama? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and she was like, her kid is doing it at school before tests. And he's like, crushing all these tests. He's doing amazing and doesn't need help. And he's very focused and he's just doing them on his own. And he said he learned it at yoga. And so I had to explain to her, I was like, yeah, that probably sounds really weird. And like, we're doing weird things, but he felt the benefits of it. And then recalled the feeling of the benefits during stressful times to regulate or harmonize with his natural rhythms, however you want to say it. And and excel and participate in school independently. And that was one of the coolest things about, that was Satanama specifically, so. Yeah, and I love that story and kind of the testament to the practice. And I feel like music therapists that listen, one thing we're always trying to help improve is that generalization of skill, because. Well, I think almost unfortunately, I don't know if that's the right word, but sometimes music is like too motivating where it's like, we don't always get to see all the issues in our sessions because ki like kids and adults are usually having like a pretty good time. So generalization <laughs> is like something we're always trying to think and work upon because a lot of times music things are going well, but then trying to get that skill outside of the music session. And so satanama. That could be a practice that music therapists can incorporate into their practice with music and in a way where our students and clients can like walk out and use it on their own independently mm -hmm. and generalize these skills. Exactly. Um, and I, I would add too, if, if any music therapist is doing it for that purpose, do kind of like a brief awareness, just ask a question like, what am what are two emotions you're feeling right now? One to two or something. Right. Then do it and then ask them again, what are one to two emotions you're experiencing right now? And you don't even have to say anything more than that. They'll start absorbing the impacts and really finding like, wow, I really went from way too excited to like, I'm feeling content or anxious to content or <laughs> balanced or happy or, you know, whatever it is. And especially if you make it a consistent practice, like before the start of every session, let's just do satanama quickly. And over time you'll start to, I don't know, parents would come up to me and say they use it in this situation, in that situation. And we didn't even discuss doing that in class, which a lot of times I do. So anyway, that's just like a little tip for music therapists, if that is your goal with Satanama to bring in that brief awareness assessment pre and post. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And almost like a technique in therapy is reflecting emotions and, and almost like validating what somebody is experiencing. So if they are content or if they're even having trouble looking for those words, but they look you know, less anxious, right? Exactly. You could help get. We could, you know, kind of reflect that where we're like, you are. You're looking more relaxed than, exactly. than earlier. Yep, that's what we do too in mm -hmm. in yoga therapy. Is like, because sometimes our kiddos or even adults don't necessarily know how they're feeling, and right. so either they don't respond or they say, "I don't know." And then it's such a great opportunity to be like, "I'm noticing and I'm observing." When you came in here, you were pacing and 
kind of not making eye contact, which is fine. Absolutely. And now you're looking at me, your breathing has slowed down and just pointing out those kind of more physical observations and then seeing, you know, usually that means you're calmer, more relaxed. You could say content, you know, if you're working on those emotional awareness goals too, you can state specific emotions. So there's so many uses. See, like when you look at the Satanama goals that we kind of list and you can take it further always. So, and that's with all the activities as well. So that's another thing that I really like about the the book and the activities is, again, it's introductory. And then as you go on, you can start to see how you can use it even more therapeutically or individualized um, or even more fun as well. Yeah. Agreed. So I think we're, I think we've gone through the ebook pretty thoroughly. Hopefully yeah. people are excited about it. We really want, you know, we, we put a lot of love into it where we really just want to help get music, get mudras, get them together in front of our, in front of students and clients, not ours only, but like, right. as, you know, as many as, as possible so that people can receive these benefits. And um, one thing I wanted to touch on real quick is how have mudras impacted your work with adults with IDD to kind of tie back to the podcast theme a little. Yeah. So pretty similarly to kid, the kids that I see, I work with, or I did work with several group, several groups back in Colorado for that served adults with IDD. And we would do the Satanama before class. We would do different mudra kind of stations, which I talk about in the book, and they can explore different mudras. And uh, I, I should share more pictures that I have. But again, going back to the observational kind of awareness that they have, but you can also see that transformative kind of experience as well. So they may, you know, sometimes I would have about 15 to 20 adults in a room and it would be a smaller room. So there's lots of energy. And then we do just one mudra and the stillness and the silence that comes over the room is just amazing. And, you know, they'll come up to me too afterward and say, I loved the hand yoga pose what's it called? And they want to learn more. And, and some of them too would use them at work when they're getting kind of overstimulated or needing a rest. And then I had one private client, an adult with IDD, and he had a lot of kind of neurological things going on and they were more recent. So lots of, med you know, added medical needs based on that. And so we would always do Satanama in our private sessions and he had it down. And then with all of these new medical needs, forgot how to do it and had really struggled touching fingers to thumb in a sequential order. And so after even just one session, he regained that ability to do that again and the muscle memory as well. So even when he, he's kind of regressed in a lot of areas of his life, just bringing Satanama back once he was able to do it again, which is awesome, especially for that fine motor. And, you know, when you talk about regression, feeding yourself is kind of a major life skill that not all of our students and clients get to have. But he regressed in that area. And so Satanama bringing that back really is so supportive for those fine motor muscles and coordination to be able to do things like that. And he really likes to write too. So he was able to bring back writing and things like that. So those are just a couple examples. But I've really had this similar impacts with adults as well as with IDD as well as kids. Um, with special needs, the they can feel it and you can see it, and it's really powerful. Awesome, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, oh, Satanama. We, we yeah. could write a whole ebook on that. These, you really could. 
The, and more research keeps coming out about it too. So you've got that. And then as if anybody listening is interested, you should find a Satanama or Kirtan Kriya video on YouTube and do it, like follow along with it and try to do it daily for like at least a week and you will feel it for sure. So then you can have your own kind of experience with it and kind of understand more what we're talking about here in this podcast as well as in the book. And then also understand potentially what your students and clients may be experiencing as well when you teach it to them. So you can increase your knowledge of it and your teaching of it as well. It doesn't take that much long, you know, that much time in your day. And it's a, it's a beautiful kind of meditative, I don't even know, it's a Kirtan Kriya. So it's like a Kriya, but it's this beautiful meditative experience that, yeah, you should definitely try. Agreed. And we'll make sure to link to stuff in the description too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And even from an assessment kind of side of things, I've definitely had students and clients where I'll introduce this and you see the difficulty in that motor coordination or even just like verbalizing and trying to do the motor. But then like within a few sessions, it's improved. And, and that starts translating to other things. You'll see kids that only p- play piano with their index fingers start to be more open to use more of their fingers. And it's it's just related to that coordination and all the... I, I just, you know, we get excited about music and yoga because neurologically, there's so many cool things going on. Physically, there's so many cool things going on. And even though, you know, some music therapists might not like this next statement, but there's a certain like, aspect of magic with music and yoga. And there's just something that you almost can't describe with words that comes from these yeah. kind of experiences and the arts and, and in meditation and mindfulness too. Mm-hmm. And we see that with our clients and students, you know, we see the neurological impacts, but we also see like, just like this emotional, spiritual kind of impacts that happen as well too. Sometimes when that might not be the goal, mm-hmm. but you can see it positively. Exactly. Affect. exactly. And that's part of like, when we talk about the elements and some people are like, that's way too woo woo. I don't even want to get into <laughs> it or even like energetic effects. I don't want to get into it, but there's a clear energetic effect if you have a client who has is having a really hard time just sitting still and finding stillness in their body, meaning they're probably likely very uncomfortable in some way. And then they participate in music or yoga or the two combined, and they are able to sit. That is an energetic difference that you can't deny because it's happening right in front of your eyes. And and so, yeah, I think just shifting kind of our focus or our perspective of what's happening holistically versus just physical or just neurologically is a really key factor when we're working with people and seeing their whole. And that's why I love yoga therapy. And we talk about that more in our, in your community coffee time, but seeing the the impacts on the psycho-emotional body, on the energy body, on the breath body, I'm sure you guys see all the time improved respiratory functions just from singing and or holding longer holding notes longer things like that so i love that you said that and there's much more going on for sure than than all of these things but also as an assessment to see improvement that improvement physically just with fine motor is is really amazing especially when it's literally putting your index finger to thumb middle ring and pinky repetitively after a couple sessions to see that huge jump in a skill set that translates into life skills. It's really cool. And I think everybody should implement music and mudras in their <laughs> classes and sessions and their personal life, but just to give access and make this practice access- accessible because it's it's amazing. It's very therapeutic and transformative. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you want to share with listeners today? Just to know, I think that mudras and hand mudras are also a kind of a deep part of Indian culture and in various aspects. And they are as old as yoga itself too. So these are, you know, I don't know if you want to say time-tested kind of practices, but they're also very deep and really enmeshed in 
Indian culture and in in yoga history. So they're really profound and really cool. And I really would love if people, you know, if you're questioning implementing them, I totally get it. Do it in your own life and give it a shot. Have an open mind, be curious and non-judgmental, and then see kind of if they help you or, you know, if you experience any benefit or otherwise from them and then take that curiosity and run with it. <laughs> yeah. That's the theme of our ebook for sure. That really is. Yeah. 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 Take the curiosity and run with it. We ran with ours and we hope <laughs> that it's a great introductory for you if you're interested in implementing more music, more mudra together to either get that information or freshen up your practice. We really hope that you check it out and we'll link everything below if it sounds interesting at all. And there's so much that comes with it and we're going to keep adding to it as it goes. Yeah. So we hope to connect with you because we're really open to questions and mm -hmm. and kind of future discussion on our ebook as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, where can listeners find you? So you can find me on Instagram at spectrumyoga.co. That's also my website spectrumyoga.co and YouTube. My name is Spectrum Yoga for Youth, but I do all my videos can be done by adults as well. I actually got a comment from an adult with autism and it was awesome. And she has been finding the videos helpful too. So really for anyone, even though my name is Spectrum Yoga for Youth. And then, yeah, that's all. My website, Instagram, and YouTube, I think that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll link those too. Mm -hmm. And y'all don't sleep on Christine's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> High quality content. I love to do a lot of the videos. I need to catch up because you're doing an awesome eye yoga series right now and I'm behind, but I want to watch them so bad because they help like that has helped me. And when you first introduced me to that concept too, I was like, Psh, mind blown with all the <laughs> screen time I do these days. And it's just great. Even even some of the ones that are more for kids, I have like done like the kind of asana with you and it's they're awesome they're so fun you have like a space one i've done that one so fun and like because their editing just makes it awesome where i really think anyone can enjoy it because i've enjoyed doing them so it's yeah it's a resource Aww. for people for your students for your kids if you're a parent so please subscribe and check out her channel it's always always high quality thank you bonnie that means so much thank yeah, you of course <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. It's been so much fun and it's always fun creating with you. Always. I know it's kind of sad. We'll keep creating things. It's like come to yeah. an end. And I know. Feel, as I we're like, wow, sadness. we're releasing the ebook. It's, it's like an end of an era, but yes. it's not because we're going to keep making these activities. We're sure. Yeah, exactly. They'll never stop. <laughs> we'll never stop. Or maybe a part two. I don't know. No promises, right, right. but you never know. We'll, we'll have to see where our inspiration takes us. But like we said, this is introductory. So there's mm -hmm. always more to learn and more to share. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. But for now, we got this one ebook. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, and thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for being such a trooper too through all the waiting and the all the work that we, you know, put into this over the years, literally. So yeah, yeah you just the best partner. And yeah, I just well, love thanks. you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Christine. All right. Yeah. Yay. I loved getting Christine back on the podcast. It's always so good talking with her and hearing about her knowledge of yoga and mudras. And I really enjoyed collaborating with her on this ebook. And we're, I'm just so excited to share it with everybody. Like we talked about, we really wanted to make it accessible to anyone who's interested in music, interested in mudras, and wants to incorporate more of that into their own practice, into their practice with their clients or students as a professional, or even with your own kids at home. So if you're interested, please check it out. We'll have all the links below as it comes out. And if today, is the 27th when this podcast comes out. Today is the last day to get this ebook on sale. And then tomorrow it will be at regular price, but still available at, on, at both Christine and I's websites, which will be linked below. And please check out those links, all the resources of Christine's that she discussed and of our ebook below. Lots of YouTube videos and just hopefully helpful resources for you to keep exploring and learning on your own with our ebook and even with some other videos too. 
So thanks again to Christine for coming on. Always, always a pleasure having her and discussing it with her. And we hope that you guys check out our ebook. So to end this month's episode, I'm going to go over the October music therapy session plan for adults with IDD. So this month we have Hello, Let's Make Some Music by Bonnie Haupt, followed by Spooky Drumming, Halloween Yoga Bingo, and a Fall Halloween Playlist Shuffle and or name that tune as a relaxation with the Adams family for goodbye. So for how to implement these or ideas to implement them, broken down as well as extra visuals, lead sheets, and other resources, check out my Patreon page at patreon backslash navigating adulthood and IDD. And this as well as all of my previous plans are available to patrons for $5 a month. Patrons also get access to our Facebook community and to our monthly Zoom community calls. And they also get episodes ad-free one week early. So for this episode, they got the episode during the sale period for the ebook and kind of got that bonus, that almost knowledge uh, beforehand. So if you're interested, please check it out at Patreon backslash Navigating Adulthood and IDD. Other ways to help the podcast include continuing to listen to it, sharing with someone you would think would like it, and rating us on iTunes. And otherwise, thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you in the next one. P.S. Sorry about Queenie's litter box sounds during my uh, description of the Patreon membership, but um, some bonus Queenie content for her fans out there. <laughs> This podcast is by Rhythmic Roots Music Services, LLC, with content and music produced by Bonnie Haupt. Thanks for listening.